for England, he keeps faith for all that is done and said. We know their dream, enough to know they dreamed and are dead. And what if excess of love bewildered them till they died? I write it out in a verse, Madonna and McBride and Connolly and Pierce, now and in time to be wherever green is worn, are changed, changed utterly. A terrible beauty. Born in the townland of Knockacullion, on the Schlieb Bay range of mountains and in the parish of Tadavnet, Seamus McElwain was born into an area steeped in tradition. An area steeped in particular in the tradition of resistance to British rule in Ireland. There was nothing easy in Tadavnet. This was hard country. Hard land, hard worked. It was an area of massive emigration. It was an area where the worst effects of partition were to be seen. Many families fled the land, their places taken by the drab and depressing sameness of conifer forests along the sides of the mountain. Seamus understood the reasons for all of this. Seamus took the war to the British. At one time it was said the soldiers operating along the border were so afraid of him that they carried a picture on the butt of their rifles of Seamus McElwain. He was the most feared volunteer of the past 30 years in the South Fermanagh region. Obviously, 26th of April 1986 is etched in a lot of people's minds. Um, that was uh, the day that Seamus uh, was uh, killed by undercover British soldiers of the SAS and it's obviously etched in my mind as well because uh, I was on active service with him that particular morning and uh, it, it, it sometimes it has been something that has been going through my mind for uh, almost now 20 years thinking about those last moments with him and I hadn't seen Seamus for something like six weeks before uh, the, the day before when I met him uh, in a house and uh, he had been away and uh, he, he was only back in the area and uh, there was an operation planned against the uh, occupying forces in the Rossley area and I had said to him that uh, you know uh, I needed him to come on this because uh, the personnel was scarce at that time for other reasons and uh, obviously he said no bother uh, he, he would come uh, he'd come that day and i met him on the friday night 
and we talked over the operation and where it was. He knew the area uh, quite well himself, so we 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 walked to the uh, we intended to walk to the place. So we left a, a, a safe house outside Clonus at um, about one o'clock uh, on the Saturday morning, just past midnight, and we walked across the fields towards Rossley, uh, which was on the main road about a mile outside on the Lissenski Road we were going and it was it was a very quiet night we actually were in time we actually sat down at a place and uh, and I needed to discuss a few things with him because we hadn't seen him for quite a while and we talked over things and uh, then we headed on our way towards the point where we were destined to go to. So we emerged towards the, the point and everything seemed to be um, okay. It was a very, very still night. It was the middle of the night. There was no noises. So, But as with every uh, operation or an active service, we approached the uh, point very, very carefully um, in case that there was anything on to road. But anyhow, there wasn't that we uh, could ascertain, and we ha walked towards the very point that uh, that we were going to. Um, I had said to Seamus, "I think everything's okay here," and uh, I emerged over or uh, began to step across a hedge. Um, he was standing behind me. And just as I put me forth across the, the ditch, just in front of me, uh, three um, weapons opened up on, on automatic fire. Only about 15 feet away that these three people were lying, uh, obviously uh, a unit, undercover unit of the SAS, had been actually within ear distance probably could hear what we were saying we were so close to them so uh, immediately i knew here was uh, uh, an ambush it was uh, there was no time to think um, i actually turned um, lifted my foot back across the, the ditch turned and headed up the field and just as I turned, Seamus was also hit. I knew I was all, uh, badly wounded too, because as I was uh, escaping up the field, I was uh, I was almost um, on the point of collapsing. But as I did uh, run up the field, another unit of the SAS opened from opened fire from another corner of the field, and actually then they hit me in the leg and it uh, broke my leg and I still kept going on. I came to a gap and uh, I went out through the gap and up along the hedge and uh, after about 10 or 15 minutes I could hear the uh, soldiers obviously uh, coming through the ditches because uh, they were closing in. And, uh, way I viewed it at that, situ at that stage was that uh, I was still within a hundred yards of the incident where we were first am ambushed and it was this was it. There was no way that it wasn't going to be found. But they found Seamus first. Uh, Seamus is in a different field from myself and uh, I could hear them talking to him and there was raised voices and uh, uh, they seemed to be shouting at him. Now, I don't know whether he was alive or dead at this stage, but um, I take it that he was still alive because uh, they wouldn't have been talking to him. So after a couple of minutes anyway, I heard three single shots, and I knew uh, Seamus was, uh, had been assassinated by these people.
three years ago, was preparing an ambush at the time. They believe that he'd been responsible for many terrorist killings. The provisional IRA outmaneuvered the Irish police by arranging their honour salute at the remote farmhouse, which is the McElwain family home. The masked IRA volunteers paraded beside the open coffin, pulling out three revolvers to fire a volley of shots while the Sinn Féin president, Gerry Adams, watched in the background. Seamus McElwain was a notorious IRA gunman. He escaped from the Mays prison while serving life sentences for two murders. Intelligence sources said he led an IRA gang in the border area. Sinn Féin leaders Jerry Adams and Martin McGuinness mourned him as a freedom fighter. Some villagers saluted as the funeral cortege, still escorted by the paramilitary honour guard, slowly moved through the Monaghan border countryside towards Scotstown. Thousands followed the coffin on the three-mile journey, but despite firm government orders, the Irish police had been outflanked. Mourners formed a chain three men deep to protect the IRA men escorting the coffin. Silently, they filed past a line of Irish riot police at the churchyard gates, policemen who were powerless to intervene without the possibility of serious disorder. On this 35th anniversary of Seamus' death, we remember him with pride and sorrow. His death was a devastating blow to our family. There hasn't been a day since that I haven't thought about or missed him. Seamus was born on the 1st of April 1960. He was the oldest in our family. There were eight children, four boys and four girls. He had a keen interest in music and played the melodica with the Nakatal marching band. He loved rock music and in particular Elvis Presley. When he was about 16 he joined the Fianna Aaron and at 18 years of age he was almost full time on active service, spending long periods of time away from home. In between he would come home and work as a bricklayer with my father. When he was returning to active service he would be heading off over the fields. Sometimes he would let me, a wee boy of eight or nine years of age, walk with him to the end of the townland. I'd often ask him where he was going. And he'd always refer to the Elvis song and said he was going to a party in the county jail. And ironically, it was kind of true in the end. Many people along the border looked after him and kept him safe whilst he was away. This brought great comfort to my parents as they worried constantly every time he left the house until he got back safely. Seamus was our big brother and our good friend too. He was smart and thoughtful and considered and he was always looking out for others. He was the kind-hearted, good-natured older brother that everyone would love to have. He'd always have 50p for you when you're a good boy and that was a lot of money in a wee hand of a wee boy like me. He lit up many's a room with a smile and quick wit. He loved his family and we loved him, and he was a great brother to us and the perfect son to our parents, and they never got over his death. As a young adult with his personality and brains, he could have had any life he wanted. He had the world at his feet, but he was born into an Ireland of injustice with British occupation, and he saw the suffering of our people in the north. He wasn't the type to stand idly by, he stepped up, he fought and died to end partition and injustice in our country. Seamus died so that our children could have a better life. A lot has happened since 1986, but now there's an, an onus on us all as Irish Republicans to grasp this unique and historic opportunity that now presents itself. I think we're closer now than we ever were before, and this is what Seamus and so many other patriots were working towards. We, as Irish Republicans, have a duty to play our part in finishing what they set out to achieve. We may not have agreed on every step of the way, but we can agree on one thing. We're all looking for a United Ireland, and that time is now. The opportunity is here, and by working together we can build this new Ireland. The Irish Republic for what Seamus died for. And I believe this will be the only truly fitting tribute to Seamus and all the men and women who died in the cause of Irish freedom. We owe them that much. 
On behalf of the Republic of Maryland, I lay the reed in memory of volunteer Seamus McAwain, who was killed by British Ground Forces while on active service 35 years ago today. Although only 26 at the time of his death, Seamus was an iconic figure in the struggle for Irish freedom. Captured in 1980 and sentenced to life imprisonment, he played a pivotal role in the 1983 escape from Long Cash. He returned immediately to the struggle and sadly lost his life on the April 26, 1986. In the 35 years since uh, Seamus' death, the Republican struggle has went from strength to strength. Today we are within touching distance of achieving our goal. Sinn Féin is the largest political party on the island of Ireland. Irish unity is not a dream anymore, but a reality. That is a major conversation across the island and beyond. I have no doubt that for volunteers like Seamus and many others who give their lives, the struggle for Irish freedom would not be where it is today. Finally, I would say to the younger generation to become part of history making in building a new and inclusive Ireland for all its people. So let's dedicate ourselves to deliver the ideals that volunteer Seamus McRaven gave his life for 35 years ago here in Russia. This is the monument to Seamus McElwain here in Nocatallan in North Monaghan. Um, one of the finest monuments you could come across. In many ways, it's very symbolic of the huge esteem and regard in which Seamus was and indeed is held in by the community here in North Monaghan and in neighbouring County Fermanagh and indeed all over the island of Ireland. Seamus McElwain was only 26 years of age when he was killed in his own country by foreign occupying forces. Although Seamus is best known as an IRA volunteer and somebody who is involved in the great escape from Long Kesh, somebody who fought and indeed died for his country, Seamus was also very much a leader in the community. He was a family man. He was just a, an ordinary Irish country lad who saw great injustices that were being um, imposed on his fellow Irish citizens just across the border here and he decided to do something about it and he paid the ultimate sacrifice. Seamus, as I say, is still held in huge esteem, very fondly remembered by all who knew him and by a new generation of people from County Monaghan and Fermanagh and by Irish Republicans of all ages. Seamus and all of those who fought for Irish freedom continue to inspire us. And now the political circumstances are such that a united Ireland, the delivery of the Republic, is within our grasp. Irish unity is firmly on the political agenda. The unionist majority in the North is gone. The growth of Sinn Féin ensures that the debate around reunification is live. It's happening at dinner tables. It's happening in communities. It's happening in every fora that you could imagine. Unfortunately, we've yet to bring the Irish government to a point where they need to be, where they're planning and preparing for the change that is coming. But we need all who want to see United Ireland to join us in working for it. That's what Seamus would have expected. That's what the people of these communities deserve. We're now into the 100th year of the partition of our country. The partition that has been an absolute disaster. It has failed all the people of Ireland. It's now time to deliver for all the people of Ireland. It's now time to deliver the vision of Seamus McElwain of an Ireland where all of our children are treated equally. It's now time to deliver the real monument to Seamus McElwain and his comrades. It's now time to deliver the Republic. She na fi na fo a to fi a le gerin buin dar su dar ting o rang e kuin 
Shall live, honey. 